if you become a student of your child, mm -hmm. you will begin to recognize, wow, they're really good at this, or this is very fulfilling to them. Um, and you affirm that and say, wow, you did such a good job on that. So, okay, you've got nine kids. How how have you helped your kids to discover, and, and, and I know probably every kid is different. Some kids, mm -hmm. you can see their gifts and talents from the time they're teeny tiny. But I know that there are some kids who, you know, are maybe 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, and they're still like, mom, dad, I have no idea. I have mm -hmm. literally no clue what God created me for. How do we help our kids to discover those things? Well, it, as you said, and I think for the most part, if you become a student of your child, mm -hmm. you will begin to recognize, wow, they're really good at this, or this is very fulfilling to them. Um, and you affirm that and say, wow, you did such a good job on that, or you had that interaction with that person. That was amazing how you did this or that. Um, at the same time, if you need to dig, dig deeper, like you're saying, is to ask those questions, you know, what do you, what's your favorite thing to do? Yeah. What do you love to do? If, if you had as much time or money as you could possibly need, what would you do with your life? And, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And just let them just start talking and brainstorming and, um, you know, l let those little things come out, but it doesn't really take long and you start seeing their tendencies and propensities mm -hmm. like, wow, they are amazing at this or that. And then you realize also that with all of those strengths come weaknesses. Yeah. And so I've had so many conversations with my kids to say, you know, this is an amazing strength that you have. For example, some of my kids are amazing communicators and they're people smart and they know how to really engage people. And I'm like, that's powerful though. I mean, you, if you're not careful, you're going to be manipulating people, trying right. to get what you want. And so you just help them to see what could come out of that. And I've assigned like my older kids, my high school kids, I'll give them an assignment. One of their whole classes for a semester is to do research on a particular career choice that they want. Mm -hmm. And they just have to spend the whole time doing research and asking questions and doing interviews and finding out, is that something that I'm interested in? So you give them space, yeah. whether that's yeah. in life or school to pursue it and figure it out. Yeah, that's great stuff. I think also making sure that our kids are not distracted by the things of the world, like their phones and video games, and not that it's, a, it's not okay to, it's okay to have those things sometimes, but mm -hmm. I think oftentimes we default to those because it's easier for us as parents yep. to say, you know, yeah, go play video games for five hours today or whatever. And when kids are so stuck in that hole of, of those, those bad habits, they're missing another world mm -hmm. of opportunity and really figuring out what they're good at. You know, I mean, seriously, how many, I don't have boys, but I know that it, I, I think it's more of a boy thing, um, is video games and how many boys you know, are just completely consumed. Like mm -hmm. they crave video yeah. games that this is what I've heard. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. We don't have video games in our house. Um, but it's like, if they can't play it for so many hours a day, yeah. they, they feel like they're missing a limb or something like that. You know, it's okay for a short time, but let them explore the world. Let them explore right. who Real God life. created them to be. Real life. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right.